if this caught you in the shin, you'd sure remember it. Ryan's Mobile One. This is the engine, so Perkins, this is where the tag is on it. Your tag will either be here, or here, or on the other side, right here. Basically look for a big flat spot where they could put a tag in, that's where they're going to put it. Here I've got my block out plate for the mechanical fuel pump. Uh, this block out plate was already there. It's got a big old weird bell housing thing on it. One of the bolts was missing. I think there's 12 holes and they use 11 bolts. Somebody dropped a bolt in here and didn't get to it. There was one that was missing from up here. There's a little discovery for you. When you go to pull this out, it tells you in the instructions that you're supposed to pull it out with the transmission or most people pull it out with the transmission. I didn't do that for a few different reasons. Um, one, it would be a lot easier to just pull the engine because of fishing it out. And then the other reason is the transmission's fine as far as I know. And uh, the other thing was, I don't think that my cr engine crane could hold that. I really don't know. I'm just going to give you a little spin around look at it. Alternator bracket, timing cover. Yeah, I've got that timing gear for it in there. That only interfaces with the pump in one direction. And on this side, these don't have glow plugs in them. But instead, they've got like a injector or something this is where diesel fuel comes in it heats the diesel fuel and sends it down the hole you got your outer timing cover sad thing is i had this all clean and then the wind kicked up like crazy i had this big old stupid storm come through crappy timing storm all right moving on mark this before i pull it off blue pen through the hole we'll just align it so because the transmission on this is basically a big hydraulic unit, it's got a torque converter like automatic transmission. It still has a heavy flywheel. This thing's a beast. It works like a flex plate. It's not thin like a flex plate, but it works like one. It's just to line stuff up. So you can push this off through the starter hole. I'm going to push it off I mean, with a hammer. Be sure to catch it. If this caught you in the shin, you'd sure remember it. It's this way, it's like a 20 pound flywheel. Well, it should be on a diesel, I guess. There's your rear main seal. Didn't take long to get acquainted there. So as far as getting this uh, bell housing off, so this bell housing, uh, you only get to the bolts by pulling the flywheel off. You only get to the flywheel by separating it from the torque converter. Torque converter, you get the bolts off through here. As you rotate it, you'll see it through this hole, the bolt's coming. You just stop at the end when it gets there. The metric system and the Society of Automotive Engineers system intersect at 19 millimeter and 13 millimeter. 15 millimeter and 5 eighths are close. 14 and close, but 3 eighths and 10. The measurements are small enough to where they really don't work. What is this hanging on by? So there's alignment dowels here and here. Let's persuade it. Good lands, this sucker's significantly heavy. Bring that in the flywheel, that's half the motor weight. So it's time to put this on the engine stand. My engine stand is accommodating for these long bolts. I mean, you gotta have at least an inch and a quarter to kill. And so I take the bolts from this, you look at them, and these just do the bell housing, and they're really short. You can only see about a thread or two out of each, so I'm gonna have to go and Come up with five bolts that are 3 8 by 24, looks like. There weren't any inch and three quarters, so I got the full two inches. And then I just took some whatever it is that comes on struts you have left over of everything tie rods. So then I've got the perfect half inch stick out that I need. Four bolts holding that big heavy thing up. The oil pump adapter plate mounts here. You've got one on each side. You've got one here, and it's just a couple of studs, and then you got another one on this side. So these are kind of hard to pull, and I don't have a stud puller that isn't going to chew the crap out of these as tight as they are. So what you do is you tighten one nut into the other nut. I just use an open end wrench. It's 18 millimeter if you're using metric stuff. Just crank that tight, and then back this off a little bit like that. Once you get to where it'll come on done by hand pretty much, and you can go back on it and oftentimes you can just pull it off with your impact especially if you can get on that especially if you can get on that second nut be gingerly with it <laughs> redhead jokes once you get it backed out a little bit you can hit it again a little trick for people if you're taking something i don't care if it's a cylinder head or an engine block or whatever it is if you want to get in and out of there quick if you want a timely turnaround 
then the more stuff you pull off your engine, the better. The less junk there is on it, the more it clears his inbox, so to say. He doesn't want to stop and have to, you know, chip and pick and work at getting everything off of your engine. So if you can do that, it gets you in and out faster. So I just bag everything as it comes off by groups. So all of the bolts for the flex plate are in a bag with the flex plate. All the bolts that will be in the rear mainsail holder will be in the same bag with that. If you lay everything together and put it in order, you know, like stack it on a floor, a shelf, wherever you're going to put your stuff in order, that way you just pull in order and it makes it so much easier. Basically, I'm making it like it came new in a box. You know, this goes with this, this goes with that, that sort of thing. I thought my pressure wash job was good enough. It's not. I can't fit my... Uh, thing on there unless I like really wiggle it. So I take a steel brush. You just make something that's going to catch all the junk so you can just throw the whole thing in the trash can. Let's go through and wire brush it. Wire brush will make real short work of these. And then also the top sides of gaskets and stuff, especially if you want to keep things clean, make sure you take a screwdriver or something across the top and that way all this junk doesn't fall into the engine. The more that you just plan on having things be clean before you disassemble, the cleaner everything will be afterwards as you go. This is what this is supposed to look like. And then I go back with the screwdriver and keep this handy because you're going to use it in a sec. So I'll just take one bolt and make a picture hanger of it. Give it a little wackety schmackety. I make some t-shirts that say wackety schmackety, don't I? I don't know where I heard that, where I picked it up. Got some coolant and some rust in there. Fantastic. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can take a razor blade, get up underneath your gasket, and just cruise. And by cruise, I mean head down like it's a highway. See how nice that is? Now what happens if I just try to peel it off? Is it going to peel off? You don't know. Half the time it does, other half it doesn't, it gets all squirrely on you. But if you can get down to clean metal and just cruise along that with your razor blade, two hands maybe, just watch your fingers because if you're pushing hard and then it breaks free, it's like knuckle busting to the next level. ER visit or Instacare visit for stitches. You know, I'll, I could say that that was going to take you longer. A <laughs> little time savings tip, don't cut yourself and need to get stitches. If anything will set your project back and make you nervous and kid gloves, that will. My inner dialogue is Eric the car guy saying, geez Brian, wait for the camera. <laughs> so I went to pull this out. I expected just a little drizzle, but look at all the oil that settled out of this thing since when I drained it. I already drained the oil in this once, but back then the engine was like this. When I pull this oil pan off, it's going to do the same thing, I'm sure. If you can keep things together and pull them as a group, it can save you a lot of time or be a huge headache. It just depends. If it's Japanese, it's going to save you time. If it's German, probably a headache. Am I right? Am I right? So I'm going to keep these two in the same bag. I'm going to count they're right next to each other. Sometimes I feel so anal retentive when I tear things apart in this fashion. Then I feel like a freaking champion when I go to put it together and it goes smoothly and quickly and is right the first time. Get a better angle. Better angle achieved. You guessed it. A special socket's coming out. See how I use this swing on it. It's like cocking back before you throw a pitch or a punch. <laughs> Either one, lots of fun. All right, oil send it. See, there's another blank where you could put another oil tap in this thing. All kinds of options. You'll find these Perkins engines in almost everything you can imagine. You'll find them in taxi cabs, sailboats, all kinds of construction equipment, trucks, or I guess I'll say lorries because it's a British company. But this is a really good engine to be familiar with. That's one of the reasons I was kind of excited. Yeah, I said excited about pulling this engine out and rebuilding it. One, I'll learn all about it. Two, make a bunch of videos. Three, I'll know that mine's good. only have to do it once. And four, for the hell of it. I'm going to put the rear main in one of these big old things that we got some cookies in the other day. Recycling, keeping things in order. I try not to do too much cleanup on stuff as I pull it apart because it just it's so time consuming. But I'll do a little bit, especially if it's like covered in oil or something. I'll wipe it down or spray it off, whatever it takes. It's an interesting plate because you got these Allen bolts at the bottom and you don't have any from the oil pan going into it. It's all on the surface. Kind of old school British simple stuff. 
like it. That'd be seven thirty seconds. I always keep these like this. So you can just like pull them off. Had them mounted to the workbench. It was pretty slick. Same old thing. You see the mounting studs are just right in line with the ones that go on the bell housing. Just remember these go on the bottom. It's probably just so that there's room for heads. It was engineered down into a pinch. Again with the Milwaukee screwdriver. These guys are showing up in everything. I'm seeing Motor City Mechanic popping off about Milwaukee stuff all the time. I'm loving them. Uh, Ford Technic, Loco, O'Brien, he's the same way. It's like, I don't know where they came from, but like I always remember drills and stuff. I used to do HVAC back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, installs on commercial businesses and stuff like that. Because that's where the money was. Uh, but we had this drill about rip your arm out of sockets. Milwaukee is so strong. Anyway, didn't see much about them other than power tools for the longest time. And now they've got all this offering of different industrial, you know, like heavy duty professional grade kind of stuff. And they're killing it. It's awesome. I think this is due for new gaskets. <laughs> I mean, if I didn't pull the engine, I wouldn't be doing this. And then I'd have leaks and all that other kind of stuff. I like stuff to be clean. I borrowed a tractor from somebody to do some quick work. I was cleaning their, no, I was moving gravel from one side of a driveway to another so I could get the forklift out. And that thing was leaking like crazy. I didn't know it didn't catch it in time. That made such a mess and created such a cleanup. I don't know, speaking of cleanup, I have a whole new one of these in the engine kit. I don't have to clean this. I'm going to put it in the bag with everything just so that it's easy to find the bolts pretty much be an earmark or if there's a discrepancy in fit bam done don't even gotta label that look at it you know what that is bonus footage at the end <laughs>